Hey guys, weird notice you have some new recommendations here. So if you look, I added trig ratios, finding an angle and finding a side. Okay, so let's do a couple of each one of these. Okay, so let's go find the side first here. All right, now you may have noticed a new function drawing on here. So again, you can draw on a piece of note paper and hand that in. So we see what is the length HI? So we're gonna make X what we don't know. Here's our reference angle. So we're gonna label this opposite. This is the hypotenuse and this is adjacent. Now we notice that we have something to plug in for opposite, something to plug in for hypotenuse. So we can say we need sine. So the sine of 64 is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 64 is x over 10. Now, we can just do a little bit of algebra here, right? We notice that x is being divided by 10, so we can multiply by 10 on both sides. This ends up canceling, and we get 10 times the sine of 64. Now, we just have to type this in the calculator. I'd love it if they had a calculator app, but um, I, I, I don't have that. So I'm just going to do this off to the side. So the sine of 64 is 0.8987, right? And then I'm going to multiply that number by 10. Okay, so times 10, we get 8.98. It sounds rounds to the nearest 10. So I'm going to have to round that to 9.0. All right, so we get 9.0. Enter. Terrific. Okay, good one. Let's do another. It says... Our reference angle is 49, so this is opposite. Opposite the box is the hypotenuse, and this is my adjacent side. Now it says solve for VW. VW is VW. That's our adjacent side, so we're gonna call that X because that's what we're solving for. Solve for what you don't know, okay? We learned that from algebra. So now, looking at what we have here, we have um, four is our hypotenuse, x is our adjacent, so we need, I hope your brain's thinking, cosine. So the cosine of 49 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 49 is x over four. Okay. So now x is being divided by four. So we'll just multiply by four on both sides. So we get four times the cosine of 49, which would equal x. And that's what we're solving for. Okay, so four times the cosine. So let's figure out what the cosine of 49 is. The cosine of 49 is 0.6, 0.656. Ish. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by 4 times 4. Enter. We get 2.62 something. So, But they said round to the nearest tenth. So this 2 is going to let me round to 2.6. 2.6. Beautiful. All right, we'll do a few more. It says solve for u, u, v. So we're going to call that x. Here's our reference angle, so this is the opposite. Opposite the box is the, uh, wait, opposite the box is what we call the hypotenuse. Well, forgot myself there for a second, and that's the adjacent side, right? So we here we got x is the adjacent side, nine is the hypotenuse, so it sounds like we're gonna need cosine again. So the co cosine of 26 is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of 26 is x over 9. So we're going to just multiply 9 on both sides and call it a day. x is equal to 9 times the cosine of 26. The cosine of 26 is a decimal. And we'll multiply that by 9. We get 8.089. We're going to round. So since that's five or more, we're going to round up to 8.1. Beautiful. I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to do one more, and then I'll switch to solve for missing angles. So DF, we're going to call X. 
All right, and here's our reference angle, 24. This would be opposite. Opposite the box is our hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent side. All right, so now we say, let's look. X is the opposite side, and 9 is the adjacent side. So this is a new one, right? We need tangent. So, oops, I, I drug my wrist across there. And I, all right, let's just pick this, okay. Um, so it looks like we need tangent. The tangent in 24 degrees is x is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent in 24 is x over 9. Okay, now let's multiply 9 on both sides. And now those would cancel, so our answer is 9 times the tangent of 24. The tangent of 24 is 0.44522, something like that. We're going to multiply that by 9. I get 4.000, so if I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to put 4.0. Okay, we have solved for the missing side length, so let's go ahead and solve for the missing angle. So our nine also suggested solve for the missing angle. Let's do a few of those. So it says solve for angle Q. All right, so solve for angle Q. So this is my reference angle. So I'm going to put opposite, and this is hypotenuse, and this is adjacent. Okay, now it appears that the adjacent side gets, it's getting close to the box. The adjacent side is 28, the hypotenuse is 56. So it looks like I need, this is my adjacent side, my hypotenuse, looks like I need cosine, right? So the cosine of angle Q is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of angle Q is 28, because that's adjacent. It keeps, because I'm so close to the box, um, I keep, uh, it thinks I'm submitting an answer here. So sorry about that. Um, okay, cosine 28 over the hypotenuse, 56. So I have to get X by itself on one side, right? or Q rather. So I need the inverse cosine of both sides. So the left side turns into just angle Q. Sorry about this, for whatever reason, it keeps adding lines to my paper. Uh, I have Q, and on this side I have the inverse cosine of 28 over 56. Okay, so. We gotta put that in our calculator. 28 divided by 56 is a fraction. Oh, interesting, it's 0.5. So the inverse cosine of 0.5 is 60. Let's try that out. Beautiful. Let's try another one. It says the measurement of angle E, so I'm gonna put it angle E here. So that's opposite and opposite the box is the hypotenuse and this is the adjacent side. So we notice 14 is hypotenuse and 7.7 .7 times the square root of 3 is opposite. So we need sine. The sine of E is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of E is 7 times the square root of 3 over 14. So we'll take the inverse sine to both sides. And we'll get E has to be equal to the inverse sine of 7 times the square root of 3 over 14. Okay, so what is 7 times the square root of 3? Divide by 14. I get this decimal, 0.866, all right? And when I do inverse sine of that, I get 60. Very interesting. I think I kind of knew that because of special right triangles. All right, so we get 60. Beautiful. Let's try another one. 
So it says we're solving for angle U. So we'll put a little negative there, right? Opposite and opposite the box. And that'll be adjacent. Um, okay, so the, what is it? What do we got here? So we got two is opposite and four is hypotenuse. So we need sine. So the sine of U is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of U has to be two over four. It's the sine of U. So we need the inverse sine to both sides. So we would get um, U has to equal the inverse sine of two divided by four, which is 0.5. I'm getting low battery, so I gotta wrap this up, right guys? Um, okay, so what is that? The inverse side of 0.5 is 30. We did that in class. 30. Nice work, guys. All right. This one says, what's W? So we got opposite. This is the hypotenuse. So this would be the adjacent. They've given us this, right? And they've given us this, adjacent and opposite. So we need tangent. The tangent of W would equal adjacent over, what am I saying? It would equal opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of W is nine to the square root of three divided by 27. So W has to equal the inverse tangent of 9 times the square root of 3 over 27. Okay, let's figure out what that is. Square root of 3 times 9 divided by 27. I get this decimal. All right, inverse tangent. I get 30. Okay, now I think I knew that by the special ones we did today, but this is kind of cool. Tan my side, cosine, and tangent work. Ooh, now this one is a cheater. If two sides are equal, this would have to be 45 and 45. I hope that this we don't have to do, use trig on. So I'm just going to put 45 there. All right, last one. It looks like I'm running out of battery here. So let's do it. It says, what's the measurement of E? Okay, so opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. We notice adjacent and opposite have numbers by them, so we're gonna use the tangent. So the tangent of E is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of E is this. So E has to be the inverse tangent of this. All right, that's a big yucky yucky to put in my calculator, but I'll do my best. So the square root of 14 times three is a big old ugly number. Okay, and then what's the square root of 42? Figure out what that is. Okay, that's 6.48. So I'm gonna figure out what that divided by that is. I get 1.732-ish. Okay, so the inverse tangent of that, second tangent, I get basically 60. Ah, so I think I should have known that, but who knows? It worked anyway. I got my answer. Well done, guys. I think that's enough. We'll see you next time.